Hi, welcome to the sixth lesson in the Milvis Getting Started course. My name is Philip and I will be presenting this lesson. In this lesson, I will explain in detail what factors affect Milvis performance and how to go about tuning Milvis for your own use cases. This lesson will be broken down into three areas, tuning vector insertion, tuning indexing, and tuning queries. Let's begin by seeing what factors affect insertion performance and what we can do to improve it. The key things that we need to know before tuning insertion is the amount of data that we need to insert and the current hardware that is being used for the Milvis node. As mentioned in the second lesson, the Milvis server parameters can be modified in the configuration file called serverconfig.yaml. There are two parameters in this file that affect performance of data insertion, wall.enable and auto flush interval. Wall.enable is in charge of enabling the write ahead log. The wall records insertion and deletion requests into a log file and the background thread writes it to the system. Once the requests are successfully written to the log file, the server returns success. This function enhances data reliability and reduces the client blocking. The wall function affects Milvis's insertion performance though. When wall is disabled, the data insertion speed is faster due to writing the data directly to the mutable buffer. But if the wall is enabled, the write ahead module log writes data to the disk and then writes to the mutable buffer, so the insertion speed will be relatively slow. To insert data reliability, we generally recommend enabling this parameter. However, if you want to improve Milvis' data writing performance and ensure that there, is, there are no abnormal situations affecting the Milvis service when inserting data in a production environment, such as a server power failure, then you can choose to disable the wall functionality by setting wall.enable to false. In addition to wall, the parameter auto flush interval under the storage category in the config file also affects insertion performance. This parameter refers to the interval of when the background data flush occurs, and has a default value of 1 second. Since data in Milvis is stored in slices, increasing this value can reduce the number of segment merges, reducing disk I.O. and increasing the throughput rate of insert operations. Milvis's segment merge strategy can be found in the documentation under Data Segment Merge Strategy. We'll also cover segment merge strategies in a subsequent course on Milvis insertion and storage principles. Since the data cannot be queried until it is flushed to disk, you can increase this parameter to improve the speed of data insertion, if as long as your usage scenario does not require high real-time performance. As we mentioned earlier when explaining the Milvis API, creating a collection requires the parameter index file size. The value of this parameter defines the size of the data that can be stored in each data segment file, with a default value of 1024 megabytes. The larger the index file size is, the more times the inserted data needs to be merged, and the data merging process will frequently read and write to the disk, resulting in a slowdown in speed. In addition to affecting Milvis insertion performance, index file size also affects the query performance. The higher the value of this parameter, the better the query performance. Therefore, when setting the value, you need to take into account not only the current data insertion performance, but also the query performance. How this parameter should be set will be discussed in scenarios when we talk about query performance later. The amount of data inserted at a time also affects the insertion performance. For the same amount of data, inserting batch data will be faster than inserting data one at a time. It is important to note that the upper limit of a single batch of data is 256 megabytes, so when we do data insertion, we need to create batches that fit under this restraint. In addition to software level factors, hardware factors can also affect the performance of data insertion. Two main areas of importance are the storage medium and the network bandwidth. When Milvis is in the process of inserting data, it performs many reads and writes, so the faster the storage medium, the better the performance. In order to write data into Milvis quickly, it is recommended to use a system that uses SSDs as a storage medium. In addition to this, network bandwidth plays a big role in insert speed. If the Milvis server and the client are not on the same machine, inserting data can be greatly hurt by slow network speeds. After the data has made its way into Milvis, indexes need to be built in order to speed up searches. Since the computational effort to build an index is fairly large, index building can end up taking quite a bit of time. Fortunately, some uses ca use cases allow for parameters to be adjusted to speed up the process. Milvis provides a variety of indexes, so before explaining index performance tuning, let's take a brief look at the types of indexes supported by Milvis. In general, the indexes can be divided into three categories. Quantization-based indexes, which are the more commonly used IVF series indexes, including IVFLAT, IVF-SQ8, IVF-SQ8H, and IVF-PQ. Then there are graph-based indexes, 
which include RNSG and HNSW. And the last are the tree-based indexes, which includes ANOI. Novus supports the use of CPU or GPU resources to build indexes. However, the tree and graph-based indexes currently only support the use of CPU for index building and searching. How these indexes are implemented and which ones to use will be discussed in the more advanced lessons. For now, we are only looking at the performance factors. Let's first take a look at the quantization-based indexes. The index divides the data points into cells by clustering. When a query comes in, it is compared to the centroids of all the cells. Once this is done, a user-determined amount of cell closest cells are selected for searching. After searching all the selected cells, the results are compared and returned. The parameter endless determines how many cells to create within an index file. The larger the endless number, the slower the index is built. When searching, a larger endless can result in faster searches, but carries a loss in recall accuracy. In addition to endless, the IVFPQ index has the parameter M. This index works by decomposing the original high dimensional vector space into the Cartesian product of M low dimensional vector spaces uniformly. When setting the value for M, a larger value results in a slower building and querying speeds, but better recall accuracy. Setting M will depend on what you want out of your system. Next, let's take a look at the graph base index RNSG. When building the RNSG graph index, each vector is seen as a point in space, and the RNSG sets the center of the whole graph as a starting navigation point. Then from this point, it uses a specific edge selection strategy to control the out degree of each point. This type of graph results in reduced memory usage and the ability to quickly locate the target position during searches. The RNSG building process looks like this. First, we find the KNNG nearest neighbors for each point in the space. Because of this, the larger the KNNG, the longer it takes to build the index. Once calculate, calculated, we iterate at least search length times based on the nearest neighbor nodes to select candidate pull size possible nearest neighbor nodes. Therefore, the larger the search length and candidate pull size, the more iterations are needed to be done and the more nodes that need to be viewed, resulting in a slower index build speed. For the selected candidate pool size nodes, we construct the outgoing edges of each point according to the outgoing degree of each point. Each point has an out degree, and the larger that the out degree is, the more out edges need to be built per node, resulting in a longer index build time. We can reduce the indexing time by decreasing these four parameters. However, it should be noted that reducing these parameters will also reduce the recall rate in subsequent queries. Therefore, when building this index, we should not only consider the performance when building the index, but also modify the parameters in combination with the query performance in recall to debug and select the best solution. The next index type is also a graph-based index. Unlike RNSG, HNSW creates a multi-layer navigation circle. The upper level of the graph is more sparse, and the distance between nodes is more distant. The lower levels of the graph are more dense, and the distance between nodes is closer. When searching, we start from the top layer, find the nearest node in this layer, and then go to the next layer. In this way, we can quickly approach the target location. To improve performance, HNSW limits the maximum de out degree of nodes on each layer of the graph to M. The larger the M, the longer it takes to build the index. The EF construction is used to specify the search range when building the index. That is, how many closest nodes defined for the current point being indexed. The larger the EF construction is, the longer the index building time will be. The larger the above two parameters, the better of the quality of the construction graph index and the higher the subsequent recall rate, but the longer it takes to build the index. Therefore, as in the case of building RNSG indexes, we set these parameters by considering the performance of index building, query performance, and recall rate during query. The last indexing method is ANOI. ANOI uses a hyperplane to partition the high dimensional space into multiple subspaces and stores these subspaces in a tree structure. N trees is used to specify how big of a forest to make. Each tree uses a different starting split. The larger the entry value, the more trees that need to be built, resulting in a longer, longer index building time. A larger entry value also results in a better recall rate. Since the index building process is very computationally intensive, we generally recommend using GPUs to build indexes. Note that some indexes do not use GPU resources, as we mentioned earlier. Using GPUs can be enabled by installing the GPU version of Milvis and setting the parameter gpu.enable to true in the server config.yaml file. 
In addition to this, the specific GPUs to be used can be assigned with the parameter GPU.buildIndexResource. Now that we have gone over the insertion and indexing performance, let's move on to the most important factor, the query performance. In the next few slides, I will talk about what things can be done to tune querying speeds and results. When searching, if you find that the query is very slow, the first thing you need to check is the parameter cache.cache size in the server config.yaml file. This parameter refers to the size of the cache space used for resident query data, with a default value of 4 GB. If the cache space is insufficient to hold the required data, the data will be temporarily loaded from disk during the query, which hurts query performance. Therefore, the cache size parameter should be greater than the amount of data required by the query. You can calculate the size of the space required by using the, the Milvis sizing tool. The parameter gpu.gpu-search-threshold is the value that determines whether GPU queries are enabled. In the GPU version, GPU is enabled for the query when the number of target vectors is greater than or equal to this value, with a default value of a 1000. The performance of GPU queries depends on, GPU and, depends on the GPU and the speed at which the CPU loads data into the GPU memory. The advantages of parallel computing with GPUs cannot be fully utilized when processing a small number of target vectors. Only when the number of target vector reaches a certain threshold, the query performance on GPUs will be better than on CPUs. In practice, the ideal value of this parameter can be obtained through testing. We already know that index file size determines the maximum number of vectors that can be stored in a data segment file, and that Milvis will query each data segment and then merge all the results. If this parameter is small and the amount of data is large, multiple small data segments will be created, making the data fragmented and seriously affecting query performance. Although this parameter will affect the insertion performance and affect the query performance, we are most concerned about the query performance, so it is recommended to set the value to 1024 or larger. Also note that an overly large index file size value may cause a failure in loading the segment into memory if the size is greater than the system memory. Another case that we need to watch out for is how often we are inserting data and reaching the index file size. This is important because unindexed segments will result in brute searches. If we need fast searches on recently uploaded data segments, a small index file size will result in more frequent indexing, resulting in the avoidance of brute force searches. So in situations where vectors are not frequently inserted, we recommend setting the value of index file size to 1024 megabytes or higher. Otherwise, we recommend setting the value to 256 megabytes or 512 megabytes to keep the unindexed files from getting too large. Like previously discussed in the indexing performance section, each different type of index has its own set of parameters that affect query performance. For quantization-based indexes, we specify the parameter nList when creating the index and nProbe when querying. And we will combine these two parameters to illustrate their impact on performance. Before discussing the performance, we can estimate the computational effort when querying with the IVF series indexes. First, assume that the size of each entity in the collection is entity size. So there are about index file size divided by entity size entities in each segment, which is denoted by num. After indexing, the data in each index file is divided into nList units, and the number of entities in a unit is approximately num divided by nList. A query will search within each data segment and then merge the results. When querying with a, within a single data segment, the target entity is compared with the centroids of endless units one by one, and the end probe closest clusters are selected. This results in endless comparisons. Then, the target entity is compared with all the entities in the end probe selected clusters one by one to find the top k entities closest to the target entity. The computation of this step is num divided by endless times end probe. So the total computation of a segment is endless plus num divided by n list times n probe. For a collection of n entities, the total number of segments is n times the entity size divided by the index file size, denoted by n segment. And the total computation of a query within a collection is approximately equal to n segment times segment calculation. The larger the total amount of calculations derived from the estimation, the longer the query time. In practice, we can determine the reasonable parameters based on the above formula to obtain higher query performance while satisfying the recall requirement. In general, the recommended endless value is 4 times the square root of n, where n is the total number of entities. In addition, there is another parameter m, which is only used for the IVFPQ indexing method. M is smaller. When m is smaller, the greater the compression rate of the high-dimensional vectors, 
the smaller the computation when calculating the distance between the two vectors, and therefore, the better the performance, but the lower the recall. There are two parameters that affect the query performance of graph index R and SG. One is the index building parameter out degree, which is the out degree of each point when building the graph, and the other is the parameter search length when querying. When querying, the distance of each point's out degree neighboring nodes will be calculated in turn with the navigation point of the graph as a starting point, and search length will be iterated at least once to get the final result. Therefore, the larger the out degree and search length are, the more computationally intensive the query is, and the worse the performance is, but the higher the recall rate. The HNSW index has two main parameters that affect the query performance. The first is M, which specifies the out degree of each node, similar to RNSG. Increasing this parameter results in slower searches. The second is EF, which dictates how far to search, with a smaller value resulting in a faster search. While decreasing both EF and M will result in faster search speeds, it does come at the cost of a reduced recall rate. When querying with ANNOY, the algorithm follows this tree structure to find some subspaces close to the tar target vector, and then compares all the vectors in these subspaces, requiring the number of compared vectors to be at least search k to get the final result. Obviously, when the target vector is close to the edge of some subspace, it is sometimes necessary to greatly increase the number of subspaces searches, searched to obtain a high recall. Therefore, ANNOY uses entries of different methods to partition the full space and searches all partition methods simultaneously to reduce the probability that the target vector is always at the edge of a subspace. So, the smaller the search k and n trees, the better the performance, but also the relatively lower the recall of the query. After talking about the effect of different index parameters of MILVs on performance, we found that query performance and recall are always inversely related. The better the performance, the lower the recall. So we need to find the optimal performance by adjusting the parameters to ensure an equal balance. The hardware resources and the system environment play a big role in search performance. When searching with a CPU, query performance depends on the CPU's frequency, the number of cores, and the instruction set supported. The higher the frequency and the more the cores, the better the performance. Milvis has better query performance when running on a CPU that also supports the AVX instruction set. Also, when using CPU queries, make sure that there are no processes on the server that are taking up CPU resources. Because Milvis computes in parallel when querying, it can take up a lot of re resources. If too many resources are taken up by other processes, Milvis query performance will be affected. If the query performance is not stable, you can add the parameter omp num threads equal num, where num is two thirds of the number of CPU cores when starting Milvis with Docker. When using GPU queries, the query performance depends on the parallel computing power of the GPU and its data bandwidth. The stronger the GPU parallel computing power, the better the Milvis query performs. In addition, since GPU video memory is generally smaller than the total amount of data in a collection, the data is not resonant in GPU memory. Data is frequently read from the CPU memory to the GPU memory during queries, so the greater the GPU transfer bandwidth, the better the performance of the queries using GPUs. There are some other things that affect Milvis' search performance. One of these is the size of the results set. This depends on the number of query vectors, nq, and the amount of vectors results to be displayed per query, top k. The size of top k has little impact on computation, but the result set serialization and network transfer time will increase accordingly when both nq and top k are large. Milvis also uses MySQL as the backend service for the original data. Milvis will access MySQL several times to obtain the original data information when querying, so response speed of the MySQL service also has an impact on the query performance of Milvis. Milvis also needs to read data from disk into memory when querying a collection for the first time, which is a time-consuming process. To avoid this process, you can either pre-call the load collection interface or specify the collections to be preloaded when starting Milvis via the parameter preload in the configuration file. When Milvis calls the deleted entity interface, the data is not cleaned up from the disk. The deleted vectors are recorded in the deleted docs, and Milvis queries will filter the deleted entities based on the deleted docs file. In this case, you can call the interface compact to clean up the deleted entities and reduce the filtering operations to improve the query performance. That's all there is to know about performance for now. It is also the last section of the Milvis Getting Started course. Here are some useful links related to the Milvis project. We welcome you to join the community.